You're listening to the 47th edition of the Bitochen Podcast. And if you're watching this, you may notice that the background is not a natural background, which I haven't done in a long time, just uh, filmed this inside of my office. But yesterday I did go out to film the 47th podcast of Bitochen in nature. Beautiful location, beautiful flowers, excuse me, all around. And uh, I had my camera, I had my, my wireless microphone, I had the, the stand. However, I forgot the SD card. The card was not inside of my camera, so I couldn't film. And so when something like this happens, and happens to us all the time, some inconvenience, something we forgot, we spaced out on whatever it is, we didn't get exactly what we wanted from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. things didn't go as smoothly as we would have liked. So we're bound to ask the question, why did this happen? And I want to share with you something that happened in our very group, in the Bitochen group, which in hindsight, you know, sometimes it's very easy to see very quickly, but sometimes you don't notice that the mistakes or the annoying things that happen are actually something which Hashem designed for a good reason. Just as a quick example, uh, last night I was at a Simcha, or two nights ago I was at a Simcha, and I went and I drove somewhere, uh, a wedding, and in order to get into the, it was a little bit of a bottleneck to get into the parking lot, and I could have parked on the outside of the parking lot, a little bit far away from the hall, but I said, I'm going to have you talking, I'm going to go in, I'm going to find a spot right next to the hall. So I drove in, and um, there with my daughters, I had a little bit of pressure to have proper bitachin, which I did, I felt like I did, and um, didn't find a spot there. Drove back out, ended up parking in the very spot, the first spot that I saw, which was outside. I was a little disappointed, my bitachin didn't work. Anyway, spent some time there, about an hour. The chasana, beautiful, beautiful wedding of, of a cousin of mine. And when I came out of the hall, so there was a tremendous bottleneck to get out of the parking lot. All the cars were lined up to go out, and there was only really one, the same road to get in was the same road to get out. It was only really enough room for one car. So all the cars were stuck. Nothing was moving. No one was directing traffic. And when I went out to my car, which was right at the very entrance of that area, I was able to pull out quickly and get out. So even though my bitachin, I thought what was going to be good for me was that I would have a spot close inside, but in the end it turned out that it worked out for the best. Now here's another story like that. The um, As I mentioned, we have our group, our bitachin group is besides for these shiurim, we have a women's group that meets on Wednesdays. We have a men's group that meets on Sundays, working on Bitochen together, reading from Rabbi Peir's Sefer, Faith of a Fear, and sharing about Bitochen, working on Bitochen, thinking about Bitochen. One of the members of the women's group, as I heard from my sister, one of the members of the women's group, Baruch Hashem, recently, her son got engaged. And during the process of her son going out, so she had actually emailed me and asked me some questions about it, asking if I could offer some ideas. I said, listen to Rabbi Brog on Torah anytime. He has some very strong views about Bitachem when it comes to Shaduchim, that there really is no Hishtadlus when it comes to Shaduchim. Everything is preordained. Very strong Shita. So during that time, this particular person, so her son was in Eretz Yisrael learning, and she she was debating a particular girl had been read to him but she was in America this girl and had been read previously and they had said no previously it didn't seem like the right the right fit but then a family member of hers recommended the same girl again so she was debating what to do whether her son should come in from Eretz Yisrael and and whether or not uh, this was the right the right thing for him to do to, to go out with this particular girl so she decided to go with her husband and meet with the girl. When when she came out of the meeting, she was she uh, was not yet sure if if it was the right idea for her son to come and indeed go out with this girl. So she says to her husband, "I just or, or she says perhaps to Hashem. I don't know the exact details of the story. She said I'd like to have some recognition from Hakadosh Baruch Hu that." This is the right place to put our bitachin. 
we should have bitachon that our son will come and that this is the right thing for him to go out with her. So they put on the bitachon podcast, number 42. And in that bitachon podcast, they heard me tell a story. I told a story actually about them and his very son, about the fact that he had been inside of the room in Givat Zev when the bleachers fell and Nebuch, unfortunately, some people passed away. But he had held on to his mother's bitachon and they had had an argument. Whose bitachon was it? Was it the mother's bitachon, the son's bitachon? She hears this story and her husband says to her, that sounds like a simon that we can have bitachon about our, our son. And indeed, she went out, I'm sorry, the, the, the son went out with, the do- with this girl and they ended up, Baruch Hashem, getting engaged. And it's, that's beautiful. Now, what she didn't know and what I see in hindsight was that that very day when I filmed that Bitochen podcast, number 42, you can go back and listen to it. So when I filmed it, so I was out in nature, beautiful place, beautiful surroundings, and I started to say my Bitochen podcast, and I went through the entire Bitochen podcast. It was about 18 minutes long, 20 minutes long. And when I, when I finished it, I went over to the camera to turn off the camera and I realized that I had not started the camera. So, I said the shear again. I turned it on. I said the shear again. A little frustrating. It happens, you know. Now, I remembered that I had done this. I, you know, when I heard, when my sister tells me the story about how they went and they listened to the 42nd podcast and how it, it had that story. And I'm like thinking, you know, I don't think I told the story the first time around. So I have a recording because I use these special wireless microphones. So I have a, the, the, the microphone itself was recording the whole time, even though the film wasn't filming. So I went back to the tape and I heard, I, I went back through the spots and I did not say the story the first time. The first time that I, fil- that I wasn't filming, the first time around I did not say the story. It came into my mind to say it the second time around when I was filming, when the camera was rolling. So, it was unpleasant, but Baruch Hashem, because it didn't film the first time, I said the story the second time, and that was the sign that they needed. Hashem lined up everything just right for the outcome that He desired, that He wanted. So, sometimes in life, things happen, and we don't know why they happen, of course. It's not always as open, it's not always as blatant as the, these two stories that I just told you. But it's important to know we have bitachon, our bitachon works. Our bitachon works and HaKadosh Baruch Hu is there. Sometimes don't, things don't go our way. But like I say in my song, we still keep dancing even when things, whatever comes, we keep on dancing, we keep on being happy, we keep on being optimistic and positive. When we're optimistic and positive, changes what happens in our lives. Now I'd like to continue with the Beis Halevi. He talks about What happens? Why does a person put in efforts that are prohibited, that are forbidden, that are against the Torah? Right, we speak about, when we say Yuvon, what we've been speaking about until now, we can understand the idea of what's going on. We said, Last time we spoke about the fact that our efforts do not produce the results. HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants its nigzar on us. It was decreed upon us that we're going to receive a certain thing, a certain amount of money, a certain parnasa. Hashem also puts it in our heads to do a particular action. Now, we can try to grab the money in a different way, which is against the taira, but it's a chaval, it's such a waste. I'm trying to squeeze it out by, by stealing, Right? He understands, says the Beis Halevi, the mistake of those who put in efforts that are not al Torah, that are forbidden by the Torah. By stealing, or by overcharging. Other things which are prohibited. Ribis, taking interest. Like we saw, the idea of that verse which says that sometimes there are eggs that a person develops the eggs, and what comes out of them is snakes, and it bites the person. Right? Here too, 
when a person puts an ishtadlus in a forbidden way, so they end up destroying themselves. When a person doesn't have that faith, doesn't have that bitachin, the money's going to come in a kosher way. So then they end up getting destroyed because when a person is involved in non-kosher ways, number one, they don't have the benefit of relying on Hashem. They don't develop that bitachin, that connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And number two, they, are, they become mushchasim, they destroy their own midas, they destroy their own character traits. If you ask the person, why is he doing it? He, he knows that it's not good what he's doing. A person has a conscience. The person feels like it's too heavy for me, the burden of Parnassah, the burden of livelihood. So many people, thousands and thousands of Jews, their offspring in the millions, were lost because they said, I got to work on Shabbos. I have to provide for my family. The truth is that this is a stolen response. What is the reason why he doesn't have parnasa? It's because he chooses to make the money in a non-kosher way. Right? Like we saw in the Madrigas Adam. We saw that if a person trusts in Hashem, so he gets the money in, in, from Hashem. In a more direct way, sometimes in a miraculous way. If a person doesn't trust in Hashem, he puts his his faith into his own kaychis, into his own efforts, into his own ishtadlus, and in this case he puts it into a forbidden ishtadlus, that's why he doesn't get it in a kosher way. It's because he chose to grab it in a non-kosher way. If he hadn't tried to grab it in this way, Hashem would give it to him in a kosher way. This is what the Pasuk means, this is the intention of the verse. Kishtaim Rois Asa Ami. The verse says in Yermia, in Jeremiah chapter, chapter 2, verses 13 to 18. Kishtaim Rois Asa Ami. Two terrible things my nation did. Oisi Azvu Mekor Chaim. They left me. I was the source of life. Lach Soiv Lahem Beiris Beiris. I was the ever, everlasting source of life. You want to get water, you go to a Mayanam Gaber. You go to an ever-strengthening font, a fountain. What did they do? They, they dug pits. They put water into those pits, but the, the pits had cracks in them. The water wasn't held properly by those pits. It wouldn't contain the water, etc. So when a person puts his efforts into something like a shtadlus at all, but s- certainly an shtadlus that's a cracked shtadlus, something which is evil, something which is wrong, something, something which is forbidden, so then what happens? The result is that you, you're leaving God. And when you leave God, so you don't get siyat the shema, you don't get the divine providence. Why are you going in the path of Egypt? Egypt, they have their water, so to speak, but they're disconnected from Hashem. They have their disconnect from God. Because the places us in Eretz Yisrael, a land which is dependent on rain. Why? Because He wants us to pray. Hashem gives us the parnasa of music. Why? Why? Because He wants us to pray. He wants us to depend on Him. He doesn't want us to depend on our own efforts. He doesn't want us to depend on our boss. Why are you going to Egypt? The Pasuk is telling us, You have to drink dirty water there. The water of Egypt is dirty, it's disgusting. Don't go there and don't drink that kind of water. The verse there in uh, verse 19 says, You will be pained. You will have difficulties because of your evil. Because of this that you're doing. Ba Lishlo. The verse is coming to take away from us. Don't think this. Don't think that the fact that I don't have money, that's what's causing that I have to go and steal, and that's what's causing me not to have stuff. It's your evil. It's the stealing. It's the opposite of what you think. It's the fact that you think that you need to grab the money. That's what causes these difficulties, these pains. Commission is bar kilemini asaparnasa germa paslanus. 
It's not the lack of livelihood that causes a person to do something wrong. Stealing, uh, overcharging, other things. The fact that they're doing wrong things is what causes that they will not attain their livelihood. Without something disgusting. This choice, this way of thinking, thinking that I can't get what I need without doing something wrong. I can't get the money without stealing, without going... I can't get it without his shtadlus. You know, you take it a step, drop a step further. Or unending, you know, all these shtadlus until the end. Says the Beis HaLevi, to the extent that I purify my actions and I strengthen my bitachon, my faith, came timat mi menu hayegiyah bahasagas tzirachav. So too, it will minimize from him his efforts in attaining his needs. So he won't have to do so much. The more a person has bitachon, the more a person has faith, the more a person doesn't mean that, you know, depending on our level, doesn't mean that we're not going to do anything. Doesn't mean we don't have to, you know, put in any ishtadlus. But I have to do less ishtadlus. Less efforts are needed. The more bitachin I have, the more faith in God I have, the less efforts I need. And certainly I don't need to do anything in a way which is not kasher v'yasher. In a way that's not absolutely, per- perfectly, according in, in accordance with the guidelines of the Torah. V'zeu be'ra midrash rabba, asher ha'gever, asher som Hashem yiftachoy. This is what the Medrash means when it says, based on the verse, Shagever Shasam Hashem Eftach, praiseworthy is the one who places God as his trust. Ze Yosef, it's Yosef. Don't turn towards the wrong means. Right? Yosef, he's a person of, he's a Baal Bitachan. He trusts in Hashem. He remains optimistic despite all of his incredible challenges, his difficulties, being in jail for 10 years. But he makes a mistake in turning to someone who's not the right person to turn to. He's only supposed to turn to Hashem. Since he said to the wine, the cup bearer of Paro, you please remember me. He said a double language. Remember me, don't forget me. Two years were added on. For him, for Yosef Atzadik, on his lofty level, asking a person to help him, when he already saw that it's obvious that this is the guy, and it was going to be him in the end, but at, you know, making too much of an effort was considered a sin. For him, it was like us if we would be stealing money. Because Yosef, on his exalted level of bitachon, of faith in Hashem, he should have recognized that his salvation does not need to come from a person who is a lowly person, a person like this cupbearer. That's not the one that should have been depended upon, but rather Yosef should have placed his faith and trust in Hashem completely. And so too, we need to learn from this idea that it's Hashem who does it. It's Hashem who gives it. We don't need to do anything illegal. We don't need to do anything that's not illegal, but it's against the Torah. The Torah doesn't want us to do it this way. Just because I could get away with it doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do. But rather, strengthen our bitachon. Hope to Hashem. Strengthen your heart more and more. Our bitachon sometimes doesn't work, like we saw in those stories, or it seems like it's not working, or something negative happens to us and says, Hey, I'm a Baal Bitochen. I'm working on my Bitochen, maybe. I don't know if I'm a Baal Bitochen. I'm working on my Bitochen. Hashem should be helping me. Why is Hashem not answering my tefillah? Why is Hashem not giving me what I asked for? Why did it come out that the SD card wasn't in the camera? I, I, I spent 15 minutes to get to this location, 15 minutes to get home. Why did this happen? No. Ka'avil Hashem, hope to Hashem. Chazak Why is the Buzzard have to say that? Ter is telling us sometimes we have a rifium. We, we hope to Hashem. It didn't work. Seems like it didn't work. Chazak v'yamislibecha, strengthen your heart even more. V'kavil Hashem. And hope once again to Hashem. Remember, it's not my hishtalus, it's not my efforts, it's not me. Hashem is doing it, and sometimes it doesn't necessarily work out, but it's always going to work out in the end, in the long run. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you again next time.